Greetings friends and fellow cigar box guitar enthusiasts. In this video, we are going to finish up this purple Avo Ubisian three string cigar box guitar with the awesome purple heart wings, um, just intonated fretboard, P90 in the bridge position, awesome sound holes. Of course, we do have the internal spring reverb going on here. Piezo embedded. I do have the potentiometer and then also the switch. So in this video here, we're going to install the tuners. We are going to install the hinge. Or no, there's not going to be a hinge. This is going to be through the body. So I'll install the, the pop rivets through here. And then the strings are going to come up and over onto a saddle. And I'll have to ground. I'm going to have to ground one of these rivets on the back. And I'll do that by drilling at an angle, the ground wire in there. Um, and then obviously, obviously soldering up the electronics. Okay, so bef before I, I uh, before we get started here, a couple of things. Number one, because this is a purple guitar, two things. I'm going to be eating purple fruit snacks, and I got a purple um, hair tie for my beard. And so if I can pull this off here, let me see if I can or not. It's easier. Oh, this is actually really difficult. Uh, I don't know if I can do this. Let's see here. I think it's easy, but it's not. All right. There you go. Is that like done or what? All right. So I'm gonna leave that on for the uh, for the remainder of this video. I did want to point out the wall of cigar box guitars here, and I'll just show them to you brief briefly, real quick, and then we'll get started here. This one here, I started, and then I didn't finish it. It's the uh, We the People. And this it has been fret slotted, so this is going to have frets on it. A uh, nice scarf there with wings. Um, one of these days I'm going to get around to it. This one here is another see-through. Does have two springs. A piezo reticle box. This is a 24 fret. Another awesome guitar. This one here is the number one. Remember this one, number one? To my friend Scotty, who passed away last summer. And I re inherited this one back. This one here is. It was my very first attempt at a cigar box guitar, and it's kind of jiggy. But I've decided to leave this one alone. Um, it doesn't work at all. There's a lot of a lot of issues with this one here. Like a misplaced sound hole. Um, so anyhow, that's what this one is. We had the Trump train. Toot, toot. Trump. I got a lot of hate, a lot of hate mail for this one. But it's all right. This one here is actually one of my favorite guitars to play here. It is a fretless slider. And I actually. Um, this is actually one of my own personal instruments. Um, look at the, look at the back angle on that bad boy. Sheesh. Um, I, I actually play this a lot of, a lot of times when I'm doing the, um, the, uh, time lapses and there's like a soundtrack in the back. A lot of times that's this guy here. And then there is my severe just intonated 
This one here is an old guitar, 138. And you can actually see that I'm really wearing this thing down up here. Uh, this one here is getting a lot of good, good fret use. Another one of my personal instruments, screws on the top, screws in the front, single sound hole, single coil. Um, this one here actually does have a tone and a volume. And I never use the tone. This one here is my best kept secret. I have not advertised this at all. In fact, this is the first time anybody's seeing it right here. This is um, a Delacaster that I, like I said, I haven't shown this to anybody. I do have Mother of Pearl inlays. Look at the texture on that neck. And nice rusty hinge. This guitar is heavy. Oh my gosh. And the reason being is because it is made out of a one piece of oak. And, and um, even with an oak fretboard. Large solder burns, 24 inch or 24 fret humbucker, huge tobacco box. Um, this guitar is a beast. And it hangs right here. Now we're getting into the $300 Bitcoins. I got a lot of people interested in this, but no one has taken me up yet on my offer of $300 worth of Bitcoin. This is the Snowbird. And I'm not going to go into detail. Because there's videos about that. The Muriel Senator. This is an antique box with antique everything. And then there's this pendulum painted guitar. We even Got matching paint on the headstock. This is the Pentatonic Plus fret spacing. This guitar is so much fun to play. Seriously, it's awesome. And last but not least, and then we're gonna get into the video build, is this antique Roy Tan with a piezo underneath the saddle, wired directly to the jack. This one here is a fretless slider. And kind of like this fretless slider, for some reason, this guitar is so much fun to play. Um, I don't want to waste your time right now, because right now we're going to get into the build and we're going to start building this thing here. So the very first thing I'm going to do is um, do the strings, ground it, wire it, put the tuners on. Then we're going to button it up, string it up. Set it up, tune it up, and then what? I can't hear you. I heard you. We're going to tear it up. All right, here we go. Because there's gold accents on this instrument, gold in the logo, gold hinge. Um, I'm going to put gold screws on the top here. I'm going to use gold tuners. Well, I also found some gold grommets. And I'm gonna use those for right here. To properly ground the strings, I reached into my bag of terminals and I selected one that was skinny enough so that the this pop rivet, this little brass pop rivet. I know I called it a grommet, but it's a brass pop rivet. It would actually fit right through the hole. So now I can attach the pop rivet and then 
run the string through it and the string will be grounded to the jack. I am just about ready to solder, but before I did, I just wanted to talk a little bit about this wire here. I use, this one here is 24 gauge. I think the next time I'm gonna go down to 26 or 28 gauge, a little bit smaller. This is a little bit thicker than um, it needs to be, but it works fine, so I'm gonna use it all up. But it just comes on a spool, which is kind of convenient. So I usually just pre-cut, pre-measure and pre-cut my wires. And then I get the wire strippers and I strip them down, expose the wire, and I dip the wire in the flux. And then using my hot soldering iron, I get them so, so they're all, all the tips of the wires are all what they call tinned. That means that they're covered with flux and solder to begin with. And I also do the same thing. I get a Q-tip and I take this flux stuff and I uh, put it over all of this, all everything that's gonna need to be soldered, I put this flux on it. And all it does is it makes the, the solder flow smooth. The other thing I wanted to point out is, check out this lovely, beautiful mess. I know this drives my wife crazy. She wants to come in here and clean up. I'm like, no, 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 no. Um, me, I need my reading glasses when I do this because I need to be able to see details up close. Okay, so there I go again saying, okay, so I'm ready. The very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do the far away pieces first and the connecting pieces connecting the... Uh, so the very first thing I'm gonna do is, is connect the ground between the switch and the potentiometer. I already did that already. The second thing I'm gonna do is the output of the switch to the input of the potentiometer. So if both your wire and your component are both tinned, then all you have to do is touch them together, touch the hot iron to them, and they solder together just that fast. Next, I am going to wire the output of the potentiometer to the jack. Tie up the ground here. Sometimes I dip, dip the tip of the soldering iron into the flux, and that helps it sometimes. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm not gonna do the ground on this side yet because I'm going to tie all of my grounds together. Hey, look, I forgot to tin this guy. Slacker. Okay, another little trick is I get my drill and I set my drill so that I can kind of close this guy without it closing down, it stays open because it's resting on the drill bit here. And then this way I can, I can get the wires a little bit closer without it falling over on me. Next, the piezo 
the hot wire, the piezo, is going to go to the left side of the switch. And that is so that when it's the switch is this way, that way away from, then it'll be on the piezo. And the P90 single coil is going to go to the right side of the switch. I have the switch straight up and down with the tabs on the bottom so that the bottom right is engaged whenever the switch is in the front position. That's good. Okay, so this wire here, this ground wire on the pickup, it's kind of short here. I don't know if you can see it here. So I'm going to have to figure out where to tie that to. So I could tie it here. I guess that would be the best place. So I'm tying the ground wire to the switch, the ground on the switch. Which it doesn't matter where it's grounded as long as it's grounded. And if it's not grounded, you're gonna know. It's gonna be blaringly obvious. All right, so I'm gonna hit that thing with some more flux here. For the flux of it. Yep, that's it. And then I'm going to cut off a little bit of the extra on there. Make it nice and neat. All right, so that's good. That switch is good. Um, okay, last but not least. Uh, let me think about this here. So it's grounded there, grounded there. Okay, so I need to jumper the ground from the chassis or the potentiometer to the grounding tab of the, of the terminal. Everything must be grounded. I should have done this prior. Sorry guys. Think about this. All it is is just a little, little jumper, and it's going to go from the back of the chassis of the potentiometer to the grounding tab of the potentiometer. And I'll show you that up close here when I'm done. This is important stuff, not to be overlooked. Alrighty then, dude, I'm almost done. Okay, now it's just a matter of tying up all of my grounds. So the ground for the, the P90 is attached to the switch. The switch ground is jumpered over to the chassis of the potentiometer and the potentiometer is attached to the grounding tab of the potentiometer. And then it, there's also a ground that goes down to the um, jack here. So all of these are good, which means I still just need to tie in 
my piezo ground, and then my string ground. <coughs> okay, so in order for me to do that, I'm going to route it through the pre-drilled hole. And so this terminal here is going to go through the back. And then, of course, it's going to be go through the grommet. Or I keep calling it grommet. Through the... Um, ah, what do you call it? Oh, shoot, I'm having a, a mental breakdown. It goes through the pop rivet. Hello. Pop rivet. And, of course, it comes out the front in the inside here. So now, now I just attach all these grounds together and then solder them up. And I say all of them, there's only three of them on this particular build because I jumped with these guys over here. And then we're going to test it out. And the proof will be in the pudding of the test. Okay, so I have not soldered these guys yet or tinned them. Or nothing. Ouch. Hot, 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 hot. I need a third hand. We're all done. We're done soldering. I'm gonna still go back with the wire ties, tie everything up, make it look nice. First, I'm going to test it out, but first, before I even do that, I'm gonna let you take a peek at it first. Okay, so here is the switch. Now this black lead here, this comes from the P90. And you can see how I have the ground of this thing here jumper to the ground here and then the hot part of the p90 goes to this right bottom right tab the bottom left tab goes to the piezo and then the ground from the piezo comes down and ties into the all the ground here so I have a ground from the piezo the ground from the strings Right here and then the other ground is this bad boy which goes to the chassis here and then this little jumper here that grounds the chassis to the ground tab which is the left tab of the potentiometer okay so this I know this is not black but this is a ground and it's jumping the ground from the the switch to the chassis. If this one was black, then that would be cool. Now this one here is the output of the switch. So it goes to the middle tab, which is the output of the switch. And it goes to the input, which is the bottom left side of the potentiometer. And then of course the middle tab of the potentiometer is the output. And that one goes to the jack. All right, so now I am going to plug it in, test it out. And you guys remember how I test these things out, right? I get an obnoxious sound on the amp. The loudest, most obnoxious sound I can find, which is actually a cool sound. Plug it in. Now I just listen. So I know that it works because the volume is down and you don't hear anything. So I'm going to put it in the middle position and turn my volume up. So it tells me my piezo is working. And P90 
idea is working. Now, how, how does the switch work? Let's see here. Piezo. And no P90. So we know that the switch works. And how about... Well, that tells you right off the bat that, that, that it's working because my soldering iron is on and the soldering iron puts a current through this thing here and it makes a horrible sound. If I shut it off, it clears it up a little bit. with that all day long but in the middle position that's where the that's where the magic happens so you get and okay the last thing I want to do is I just want to check my my ground so I just lick my finger and I touch the ground So that tells me that it's grounded. Yay! We've got the pop rivets installed and it's properly grounded. And obviously we got the insides buttoned up and I do have the four corners screwed down nice and tight. Now this guy is tight to begin with. I can't even get that out with my fingernails without busting a fingernail. So. I have to get a tool if I want to open that thing here, which is good to have this thing nice and tight. So listen to the resonance. So this box, I can already tell right off the bat, it's going to have awesome acoustic properties. Golden tuners with gold and bushings. Don't lose that. There's just something about purple and gold that go together rather well. Put a little eyelet in there so that this string here from the second tuner here will come, come down in here and then come straight from here to the zero fret. And I also created a little hardwood saddle. Now I'm ready to put the strings on. We got the strings on and I am not tuned E B E. In fact I am tuned B F sharp B. So yeah, so those these strings are like low. So I just barely set this bridge where I <clears throat> thought it sounded good. I haven't, I haven't, we have not set this up yet. I just put the strings on and we're stretching them out here. And... So again, 
again, this is strict, just intonation. These harmonics are exactly <coughs> over the frets. up to normal but first hear that spring hello hello hey is there anybody home hello now we are tuned up and set up and no I am not tuned E B E nope this time here I am tuned G, D, G. So first the piezo. for the clean sound. Man, I forgot to mention these little um, organic fruit little gummies, whatever they're called. Delicious. Mm. And the final touches are, I do have a eyelet here with a knot for the strap on this side. And on this side, it is just tied off with a wire tie. So it makes for a nice strap. And I also have the golden screws on the top. So you have two of them here. One there, one there, one there. I did want you to hear this, the reverb springs. I'm unplugged, there's nothing plugged in here. 
So listen, listen to these notes up here. Listen, listen for the reverb. Listen how quiet it is. So quiet, in fact, even the cat is asleep. Now I can really scare everybody by turning it up really loud. But I won't. Major thirds are just in the pocket. So if you enjoy these cigar box guitar videos, be sure to like, comment, share, subscribe. And if you're interested in becoming a, an official cigar box guitar enthusiast, you can check out the um, Patreon link in the banner above. And I do have plenty of links to merch below. And I also have a link to the gentleman who builds these custom design cigar box guitar stands for your workbench. Andy Pearson, his uh, email is in the video description below. So I'll leave you with a little outro. enough of this huh all right you guys thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video